the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for June 22nd. No storms are active today, but there are several areas of interest, mainly spanning the Western Hemisphere. 29 storms have formed so far on day 174 of the year so far in 2020. June 22nd is the date. 20% chance still for the Atlantic system, according to uh, our latest numbers. National Hurricane Center have just brought that down to 30% from 40 in their update. In the Eastern Pacific, day 39, and we have four areas of interest in the next five days. Two of them on either side there, moderate chances in the orange circles there. Uh, that's in the next five days. We'll look at that a little bit further shortly. Nothing active in the Western Pacific and nothing expected here in the next five days either. So looking rather quiet and timid right now over there. And in the Southern Hemisphere, we still have that one area of interest which could develop off the coast of Indonesia in the next few days and that one has a small chance of development. Looking at the North Atlantic right now, the tropical zone at least is dominated by dry air, uh, Saharan dust as a matter of fact, and you can see it swirling along there and churning its way through now the Eastern Caribbean Sea with more of it spewing off the coast of Africa behind it as well. So uh, a lot of moisture being sapped away there in the main development region. Uh, if it was later in the year, that might have been more important than it actually is at the moment. In the Eastern Pacific, things you can certainly see that things are getting ready to warm up. And we think we are going to see a train of cyclones now in the last week of June into the first week of July. Um, one near the Central Pacific Line and one forming further east and two in between, which could all form, all of them could form there. And in the Western Pacific, we've got this uh, a little cyclonic looking feature there north of the Northern Mariana Islands. But uh, apart from what it looks like visibly, it doesn't look like much else. And apart from that, just that frontal system moving through there, just to the south, uh, dipping south through Okinawa and the southern part of Japan. The South Pacific looking very quiet actually in the last 12 hours. This is the latest loop. Just a few very isolated thunderstorms along the island chain there. And in the Indian Ocean, um, that 10% area still not particularly discernible yet. Um, it's still yet to arrive on the actual radar, but we expect that will be in the next couple of days. Sea surface temperatures warming up in the Eastern Pacific, so that will certainly fuel that early burst of activity that we are now expecting pretty soon. The Atlantic pretty much recovered fully now after Cristobal. Temperatures back up to 26 plus in the Gulf of Mexico, widespread, 28 in a lot of areas too. Out in the open Atlantic, things warming up there slowly but surely, certainly on track with some of those big seasons of the past, for example. The Indian Ocean um, slightly above average there as well, and the Western Pacific same too. The, Gulf, uh, the uh, South China Sea in particular above average, as you'll see on these sea surface temperature anomalies. Um, near the Philippines it's only around average, and further east in the Eastern Pacific you can see that La, Nino, uh, La Nina event still well pronounced and uh, the subtropics of the Atlantic and part of the East Pacific also cooler than average. Well, I don't think I'll get over that slip up just before there, but June 22nd, 1957 had one very important storm active, Category 5 Virginia, which was peaking on this day with winds of around 175 miles per hour and a pressure of around 899 millibars. So not very many storms peak below 900 millibars so early in the season, even in the Western Pacific. And this was very close to the Philippines. It would curve off towards the northwest, then towards the north, and then gradually weaken. So uh, the next name in the Atlantic, if that uh, small area of interest develops into a storm, chances are fading. It would be called Dolly in the Eastern Pacific. We were looking at Boris and possibly Christina Douglas and Elida. And in the Central Pacific, the next name on list one is Hone. In the West Pacific, list three sees Sinlaku next up on the naming list, followed by Hagapit. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on the brand new list one is Gatti. 
in the Southern Hemisphere, in Australia, the Australian region, the next name is Imogen, followed by Joshua, and in the Southwest Indian Ocean, the next name is Kundai. In the South Pacific, we're looking out for Yolanda. That's all for now, we'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.